Hello, my name is Robert Earl White, and when I was almost four years old, I found out that extraterrestrials and UFOs existed when a UFO crashed behind my family's house in the site that you see me standing in now. Not too far from here, above the tree line, was my aunt's house and my mother's house, our house. And at the time, my aunt that was next door, April 21st, 1991, around 10, 18 p.m., she was getting ready for bed and she was in her bathroom and she looked out her back window. And in this location here, she saw a very elongated triangular black craft with three blue lights on the tips of it and a white light coming from the center of it. Once she saw this, she went back into her bedroom, picked up her phone and called my mother who was directly next door. My mother heard the phone start ringing and she went to the back of the kitchen to pick up the phone. As she did, she heard my aunt saying, Beth Ann, look, there's something in the backyard. What is it? My mom saw the same craft completely silent, not moving whatsoever, maybe a telephone pole or two above the tree line. As she's watching this, she screams, oh my God, what is it? What could that be? Her two friends heard the commotion and they got up off the couch running over to see what it was and screaming, what is it, what is it, what is it? At this point, I heard the commotion and I also started watching this and it was absolutely incredible. The entire experience lasted about five to six minutes as we were all watching this craft levitating. And keep in mind, it was raining that night and cloud coverage was 1,200 feet, very low. So this thing was extremely low. And as we were watching this completely silent black triangle with three blue lights and a white light in the center of it, all of a sudden, red and orange sparks started shooting out of this thing. And then all simultaneously, there was a white beam of light or a ball of light that came down, hit the craft, all within the same time the craft, the center of it, sucked itself into itself. And the outskirts of it exploded in a massive white flash and you could see the debris flying all over the place. And all at the same time, what was left of the craft shot directly in the site that you see me standing now. My mother instantly hung up the phone and called 911. Regardless if it's extraterrestrial or some sort of experimental government vehicle, it doesn't matter. When you see something that large explode behind your house, it's very traumatizing. My mother instantly called 911 and what happened after that has been known as the Lower Alloways Creek incident. Now the Lower Alloways Creek area here in Southern New Jersey is not too far from the Salem County nuclear plant. And the creek you see behind me is directly connected to that nuclear power plant, which we all know that nuclear plants are a no-fly zone. So what could be hovering here? Very interesting indeed. After my mother called 911, 10 minutes later, the police arrived at our house to take initial questions, very brief, maybe five, 10 minutes max. They went to my aunt's house, the same thing. They really wanted to see what was going on at the crash site. Following that, 25 minutes later, we had two black cars pull into our driveway. Out of the one car, two gentlemen wearing black suits and black hats, no sunglasses. And out of the other car was a gentleman dressed in Air Force attire. My family let them in throughout the night of the incident. My family did not leave the house. It was raining the night of the incident. So we allowed the two men in black and the gentleman from the Air Force to come into our house. My family thought nothing of it considering we just had some sort of aircraft explode behind our house. They let them in there. Needless to say, after the men in black started to fill my mother in and did a brief regression hypnosis therapy with her, they told my mom, do you have any questions? My mother said, yeah. My mother asked the men in black three simple questions. First question is, are these things dangerous? The men in black replied, if they were dangerous, do you think we would still be here? The second question my mother asked the men in black 
Why don't people know about these things? The men in black all the way back April 21st, 1991 said, we are doing everything we can by preconditioning and within the next 10 years, you will see signs of UFOs and extraterrestrials in all forms of media. My mom said, okay. The third question and the last question my mother had for the men in black, she said after finding out that not only did a UFO crash behind her house, it turns out my mother was being abducted by these beings and she was in the extraterrestrial hybrid program with a species she called the tall whites, the Killy Tocourt coming from the Vela star system, okay? The third question my mother asked the men in black, when these beings take me and I'm not here, what would happen if something happened to me, her son, which I was three and a half years old at the time, or my elderly grandfather who lived with us and my mother helped take care of. What would happen if something happened to them and these beings have me all found a craft somewhere? The men in black replied, they use small gray extraterrestrials that stay behind and watch. And if anything was to happen to your child or to your grandfather, they would have you back and the men in black snap their fingers like they just learned the first human trick of their lives. It was so strange. My mother said, okay, I understand. Following that, the man in black said, do you have any other questions? My mother said, no. They said, okay. Tomorrow, many UFO investigators, news agents, newspapers, and media outlets are going to come here and we want you to say that it was a helicopter. If you don't say it was a helicopter, we will take your son away. My mother said, okay, I understand, and she played the script. Shortly after that, just as the men in black predicted, they predicted this because the men in black are the ones that are giving this information to the news agencies, to the Mutual UFO Network, who also came out and did my family's case. The men in black are the ones tipping off all the media. My family remained anonymous, yet we were getting calls from Hollywood, Unsolved Mysteries, the show sightings. My mother and aunt, they were on the Philadelphia KYW3 channel news twice. This was a real event. And after 30 years, I finally found some evidence. And when I did, I made a documentary, which you can go in the description and watch the first three parts of my documentary in there. And you can see the actual articles and a lot of information. And they came out. And they came out a few times and they would do more regression hypnosis therapy with my mother. And the things she would say were just astounding for someone that grew up in an area like this here in southern New Jersey, no man's land, not far from a nuclear plant, and the knowledge that was coming out of her about genetics and the universe was completely astounding. The Men in Black did an amazing job at keeping this story and the narrative they wanted to play as a mysterious helicopter crash. I also have uncovered many articles, phone transcripts with all the military bases except for Dover Air Force Base, which was the Air Force Base that was directly involved with this. The Coast Guard was here, right here, with their Coast Guard cutter boat patrolling the area. They turned away the firefighters as they were coming down this road and they turned them around and said the situation is under control. They also have black tarps all over here on the marsh covering what could be debris. Following this, eventually they called out a tree cutting service that cut down and removed a few couple trees. They also called a flatbed truck which actually moved most of the debris out of the area. I believe that I have found some of this debris and is highly magnetized and gives off its own electromagnetic field. And I plan on having these pieces tested. It's just one of those things where it's really hard to trust someone because if it turns out that these things aren't a meteorite and it's actual UFO crash debris, I wanna make sure that I'm able to hold on to it because it's extremely important to me. So many different people were involved with this case and after sharing this story and finding evidence, I made this little documentary that you can find in the description. 
After I did this, I had an outpour of people that worked on the EMS squad, people that were at the firehouse, people that were in the vicinity. There are reports of multiple phone calls to the police station of people seeing this thing. It's all documented. We have the police reports and all of that information. You have seen so many people on the History Channel and other TV channels and the news talking about UFOs and aliens. And sometimes it's just something they saw, not having any evidence to back it up. Why haven't you seen my story on the news? Why haven't you seen my story talked about every UFO investigator there is? They don't like the narrative because my family was ridiculed and mocked. My mother was made fun of constantly for the things she went through and it was a big part of why she remained anonymous. But even sharing this with close family and friends who weren't there at the time of that accident, they would laugh at her, call her crazy. And that's exactly why I'm doing everything I am doing with my series, We Are The Disclosure, helping people get out there and share their experiences. Unfortunately, two months after my mother passed away, I finally found evidence validating our family's story and my story. It was unbearable to be three and a half years old and learn something like this in a world of closed-minded people that can't comprehend it. I learned really quick I need to keep my mouth shut if I wanted to have friends. I learned the hard way. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And recently in the government and Congress, you've been hearing a lot of talk of UAPs, all right? UFOs. They keep switching the names. For example, when they do announce extraterrestrials and aliens, they're going to say NHI, non human intelligence. They're switching all the terminologies for this so people like my family and all of the other millions of people that have lost their jobs, their credibility, their reputation for having simply an experience with these things that we know are absolutely real, who is going to hold the government accountable? Who's going to hold them accountable? Are these pilots that lost their job, are they going to be reinstated? What about the professors that were kicked out of universities for talking about these things? What about them? Are they going to be able to teach again? What about all the people that were locked up in mental institutions for having one simple experience? What about those people that are still sitting in those beds? What about it? Who's going to do something about it? I plan on holding this government accountable for the families they've made suffer because at the end of this whole entire experience, even though my mother was in contact with all sorts of beings. Some of them had more positive intentions and others were just around for scientific experiments, you could say. With her being in the hybrid program and creating children. Yes, I have hybrid brothers and sisters I can't be with because of the closed-mindedness of this planet. But since I was a kid, I knew the existence of these things. I got to see it firsthand. Most people can't even comprehend this if they saw it in a movie. They can't imagine actually living through it. Now imagine living through it and not being able to talk about it for fear of ridicule and rejection. And now that I have the evidence, I'm not going to stop until everyone knows this story. And I am representing the ones that can't speak any longer. All the ones that have passed on. All the ones that are so afraid of the ridicule and rejection that they rather keep silent and suffer. This is my job. We are the disclosure. And I want to try my best to help everyone out there with these experiences. My family's story is quite incredible and it was a lot to handle for being so young, but my mother did an excellent job helping me understand the larger picture of all this. And along with all the evidence and research in the area, I've uncovered so many things going back to the 1800s of the same blue lights flying around here. Five years prior to my crash, I found an article of Dover Air Force Base getting something on their radar near the nuclear plant, Blue Object. 
They contacted the fire chief, which was also involved with this case, which is actually a cousin of mine. And also the Gloucester County Coast Guard that was patrolling this scene because they patrol the nuclear plant. They covered this up and so many people in the area just dismissed it as something very strange. Until I made my documentary, which you can find it in the description, all three parts, you'll find the playlist and a few interviews I did. And when they saw that, they started finally to come forward because they were finally hearing all the different sides. And some of the additional information I've discovered in this area and about the nuclear plant is quite remarkable. So yes, I had a UFO crash behind my house. I have the evidence, I've already proved that. Today is the anniversary, 31 years later. And when I was a little boy and I used to play behind this bridge that you see here, I used to wonder to myself if I would ever grow up and would I be able to share this story with the world and would they believe me? It was hard not having evidence. Why would anyone believe me? But now that I've discovered this evidence, I'm not going to stop and everyone needs to know that these things are as real as you and I. They're in every religion, ancient and new. Everything. It's all connected. And it's not fair that my family had to suffer for so long, so long, for no reason for the false sense of national security that they would threaten a 22-year-old single mother, my mother, that they would take me away if she didn't say it was a helicopter. Which, by the way, I have all the reports that FAA, all the local airports, all the other military bases, except for the ones that were involved, I have the transcripts. No airplanes were reported missing, no helicopters reported missing, or nothing should have even been flying in this area to begin with because of the nuclear plant. And if that's not strange enough, the night of this UFO crash, this bridge and this road was shut down and it's still closed today. This actually happened. So please subscribe to the page Check out We Are The Disclosure and what I'm doing for the Disclosure community. We're not waiting for the clowns in Washington to tell us what we already know. What I've known since I was three and a half years old. I'm not waiting. I've never waited for them. We're making disclosure happen. And I plan on holding the United States government accountable for all of the lives they destroyed for false sense of national security, of covering up one of the greatest connections in human history. We are the disclosure. Thank you. Please share, subscribe, and like, and check out the description for the documentary.